Hello, 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 folks. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. I've been uh, very bold and lazy the past while. Well, not really. I have been walking away, but the nature of where I am right now in my project, it's just kind of boring walk. You know, I kind of spend a lot of time doing bug fixes and and supporting people that have that are using it, that are using Tactics Toolkit. So uh, I just haven't had that much to talk about, really. Oh, well, I should say, if you're new here, hi, <laughs> I'm Aaron. And I'm making a tactics game, specifically I'm making a tactics game asset pack in Unity for uh, called Tactics Toolkit, the all-in-one asset pack for creating your very own strategy game. That's my sales pitch. <laughs> but in the, in the time I've been away, I have added a few new things. Uh, so let's go into it and let's do a wee update, will we? So first up, I want to talk about movement cost. If, if you're not new here, and you've been on the channel a while, you've, it's very likely you've seen this video um, where I talk about my pathfinding system because it's the most popular video on the channel. And uh, in it, I talk, I talk about movement cost and how movement cost will aff affects my pathfinding and all that jazz. But the thing is, I never actually implemented it. I think my original implementation was kind of whack and it was inconsistent, so I ended up scrapping it for the initial release of Tactics Toolkit, and now people have messaged me enough that I finally come back and I'm here to, and I've implemented it, I've done it, and it's on Tactics Toolkit right now. So, and I've also done three tutorials on pathfinding without moving costs, so I thought it'd be good to, let's step through exactly how it works, and let's see if, if, if you want to implement it into your own pathfinding solution, if you want. Um, so yeah, let's jump in. So as a quick recap, my pathfinding system can be broken down into two parts, the rangefinder and the pathfinder. The rangefinder takes an origin position and a movement range, and it will gather all of those, all of the tiles within, the, within that range. Uh, and originally this worked with a step count. So you would have your origin, and then you would get all of the neighboring tiles and that would be step one. And then you would take all of those new tiles and get their neighboring tiles and that would be step two. And you kind of just repeat this process until the steps equals the movement range or the range that you've passed into it. And this is good because it's not only movement range, This also, I also use this for my attack range. And that works pretty good, but it's a kind of a basic solution when we start talking, thinking about how to implement movement cost. It doesn't really hold up too well. So if we add in movement cost to this graph, this is this is what we get back. The brown tile is mud and it costs two instead of one compared to all the other grass, okay? And our character only has a movement range of two. So originally what I did was I tried to keep it all within the range finder. So I was kind of just keeping track of the remaining movement range the movement cost of the previous tile and the uh, movement cost of the tile I'm trying to get. And that works pretty well. But you see in the top right tile, it's possible for tiles to have more than one possible movement cost. So depending on what order the for loop moves in, this tile could either have a movement cost of two or three just depending on which tile comes last so i needed to keep track of the total movement cost within the tiles themselves which is what i've done and with that i can you know just compare if something tries to override the movement cost of this tile always keep the smallest one and that's how you end up with something like this and that worked pretty well and then with the Pathfinder, it is a A-style pathfinding algorithm. And the problem is, is that not every tile is accessible from every possible path, right? So even though we have access to the brown tile and the top white tile, we shouldn't be able to move along the brown tile to get to that white tile, right? Because that just, it just, the match doesn't add up. So it's pretty simple. All I had to do was take my Manhattan distance function and kind of add in the movement cost to that so it will always return and then 
back when my pass is getting created, I can always take the short, the smallest uh, Manhattan distance, which is now affected by move cost. And that's it. I hope this little explanation works out well. Uh, make sure to ask if there's any piece of this that didn't make any sense. And then the only other new feature that I've added in is tooltips. Nothing <laughs> super exciting about tooltips, but you know, with these types of games, there's a fuck ton of information getting thrown at you all the time. And tooltips are a really valuable way of displaying that information without clogging the screen. So you only have to see the information when you want to see it. And that's super powerful and a really useful tool to have in these kind of mechanic heavy games. I'm not gonna go through like how I've done it. I'm gonna link a video below by Game Dev Guide that, that got me started. It's great, it's a great tutorial. And if you wanna make tooltips, that's a great way to, do, to get started. I did add a little bit to it. I also added in a, like a dynamic positional. So it'll take the mouse position and the bounds of the screen and it will always position the tooltip in a nice position based um, so it's always on screen. Yeah, and I think that's, it, it worked out really nicely. I'm happy enough with that. Uh, and then I also added like a fixed version of that as well. So some games don't have the tooltip where the mouse is. They just, it'll just be in like a corner somewhere or something like that. So that's there too. And that's, and it's really good. I was happy enough with that solution. And, and to be honest, that's kind of it. You know, as I said at the beginning, most of my time is spent bug fixing and just supporting uh, the guys that have bought it and have been communicating and stuff like that. So, so to be honest, it's, I'm a little bit nervous and excited at the same time because I feel like I'm getting to the finish line of Tactics Toolkit. I can see it, it's coming, <laughs> I'm getting there. I have one more big update planned that I'm gonna make a video about and that's about uh, updating the, the tone order controller. I wanna add in a conditional tone based system. So think like Final Fantasy or um, the Trails of series where your actions have consequences within the tone order this kind of dynamic tone order and yeah I want to do something like that and uh, that's going to be probably like the last big update and then everything after that is going to be stuff that just people ask for so if there is a, if you are a user of Tactics Toolkit and you want a feature you got to ask me ask me for it and if it if I think it's a good idea I'll definitely do it 100% but ultimately ultimately this means I'm going through a little bit of a content drought which is why I've been gone for so long I just don't have anything fun to show or like interesting to show so i think i actually need to just mix up the content a bit and change the way this channel works and what i've been thinking about is design focused videos so way back when i started when i started making videos about this uh, i made a video called what makes a great tactics game and it was just basically it was just purely about talking about other games and what they do and how, how they work and i really enjoyed it it was one of my favorite videos i've ever done so i think i'm going to make more videos like that and within those videos, maybe I'll do a little update of like, oh, by the way, I've added, you know, here's a box <laughs> in my game, which is kind of what it's going to be boiling down to. But yeah, I'm excited to do stuff like that, I think. But I would like to know some feedback. Let me know what you think. Or if there's anything, other type of content you think I should be doing, let me know. Yeah. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. This one's a bit dry. I know, I just wanted to do a little update and, and let you guys know I'm still alive. But before I go, I want to do a big shout out to the Discord. Make sure to, the link's down below, make sure to check it out and join in. It's been popping off lately. And the guy, it's been such like a motivating and positive space um, for people to talk about game development and, and share their stuff. And it's just been really fucking cool. It's one of the best things that have come from the, the channel, to be honest. And uh, yeah, I can't believe I was so reluctant to do it in the first place, but I'm just really enjoying it. So yeah, check it out if, if you haven't yet, because it's awesome. And with that, I'm going to leave. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Hopefully it won't be two months away, but cheers guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it a lot. Bye-bye.